Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting, crafting, books, gifts, um, and all the things I'm getting up to. Hello, how are you? It is mid-October, 2021. And uh, in Canada, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. So we had a really lovely weekend last weekend where we went to visit um, my parents who live about an hour away from here where I live in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, we had a lovely dinner with them. Um, we got to visit in person in their home, which was really nice. We brought along our dog, Blue, um, and we had a great visit. And that's something I was really thankful for. It's been a long time since we've been able to do that um, and feel comfortable um, knowing that we were all safely vaccinated and uh, weren't putting anyone at risk. So I was very grateful for that. Um, how else did I spend my Thanksgiving long weekend? Driving my kid around to dancing and soccer practice and crafting. So why don't I share a little bit with you what I have been getting up to. I finished my pavement pullover. This is a pattern by Vera Valenaki that has been on my needle since June of this year. Um, Shocking, I, it, that, that's a long time for me to be working on something. And, and to be fair, I, have, I wasn't really working on it for most of that time. I would work on it a bit, then I would put it away, and then I would work on it a bit, and I would put it away, and finally I thought to myself, it's time, I could use a new little pullover. Um, and so it's finished, yay! You can see the sleeves are kind of a three quarter or slightly longer than elbow length. I love it, I love the color. This is yarn by Cedar House Yarn. I will put the correct yarn right here. Um, and it's a pattern by Vera Valmack that I've knit before and really enjoyed. I'm hoping that this version in a superwash uh, mer merino with nylon will stand up a little bit better than my previous version, which was um, had cashmere in it, so it's a bit pillier, uh, which is still a lovely sweater, but it, it um, I have to be gentle with it now. Um, but I'm very happy to have it finished. I will insert some finished pictures right here so you can see how it looks. Um, I really love this sweater and I think I will be wearing it a fair amount this, this fall and into the winter. Um, so that is my only finished object for this, uh, this week. But I do have a couple of things that I've been working on. So I will start with a pair of socks. Um, this pair of socks is half done. Oh, look at that. It fits from like corner to corner. This is the um, uh, Frenzy Frenzy Sock Kit by Ginger Snap That. I picked it up at the Prairie Fiber Festival that was held in Lacombe in September of this year. Um, and I cast these on pretty quickly because I was so excited about the way that this color gradiates. And maybe I'll just give you a better show of that starting with these really olive tones in the heel or in the toe and working up to some more pinky and purpley shades all the way up to some bright purples at the top of the calf. And then this coordinating skein that I used for the um, ribbing at the top of the sock and also for the heel. I'll just pop a picture of my calf right here so you can see what this sock looks like. I use the fluorite pattern, which is a sock pattern by Andrea Mowry. I've knit this pattern um, before also, um, just because it's kind of a good standard knee-high sock. The original sock is knit in reverse stocking stitch, so it's all pearls on the outside. And uh, I chose to just do it in the reverse, so it's stocking stitch, um, stocking stitch on the outside. However, as I was knitting it, I was like, I should have just knit these the n normal or the, the usual way because Look at this is so this is the, the um, reverse stock and stitch stockinette side, and I think it's also beautiful the way that the pearl stitches show the color. So um, I'm thinking I might try and get another pair or another set of this pixel or sorry frenzy sock yarn. Um, there is an event. Hopefully well, that will be held in November next month in Edmonton called the Edmonton Fiber Frolic. It is held on, well, the in-person shopping event is held on November 
13th, it's a Saturday, uh, and I bought tickets so I can go with my friend. And so if Ginger Snap that is there, um, I'm hoping they will be there. I might see if they have some more of this yarn so I could try a reverse stocking st stockinette stitch uh, version of these socks. Um, I really fell in love with this hydrangea colorway. It's just the colors I thought were really lovely. And I have cast on the second sock. I started out using, um, I started out using Magic Loop Method for the toe. And uh, then after I finished the toe, I just switched to DPNs because I find I'm faster with DPNs and I don't have to think as much. So I have this much of the toe and foot started um, and I'll be just working on these sort of when I have a few minutes. I like having a stockinette um, pattern on the go um, just for mindless knitting and socks are nice and small and portable. And, and that is all of the sort of everyday knitting that I have. However, I have started gift knitting. Um, and that leads us nicely into our next section, which is called Jolene Gifts A Lot. Hello, and welcome to Jolene Gifts A Lot. Um, I thought it might be a nice idea to share with you some of the um, gift knitting that I've been doing or I plan on doing this year. I um, am a planner. I have a bullet journal. Um, I started bullet journaling uh, a few years ago and I find it's just a nice place to keep track of things. Um, I like to make notes. I like to sort of um, keep track of, of what I'm doing. I always have a section in my bullet journal where I keep track of my knitting logs, I keep track of uh, my projects, when I started them, when I finished them, what yarn I'm using, um, how, and how much yarn I've used throughout the year. I like to keep track of my yarn in and my yarn out <laughs> because I'm trying always to keep my stash coming down or at least to a manageable level. Um, and always in my, my bullet journal, I have a section where I plan what I want to do at Christmas time. Uh, so in this year's bullet journal, let me just find my page, I have directly across from um, my Christmas baking sheet, where I keep track of what I bake, um, I have a Christmas knitting log. I'm just going to wave that at you in case some, anybody watching this is actually on this list. Hi, Blue. Are you on my Christmas knitting list? Do you want to come and say hello? Come up. Come here, pups. Um, I've had some questions about my puppy and he has grown a fair amount. Blue, can you say hello to the people? I, okay, okay, I love you too. Um, he is still a puppy and he's still very excitable <laughs> and not too interested Hi. in saying hello. Hi, Blue. Okay, you go, you go. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thanks, Blue. Um, so the reason I showed you my bullet journal um, is because I like to plan out at about this time of year what I want to knit as gifts for people in my life to make sure that I have time and a schedule. I like to make sure that I have the time to finish the projects that I want to do so they're not super rushed at the end. Um, and so I do have a few things that I want to knit this month for the month of October. And then um, I have a few things planned for November and December. So I just sort of uh, make sure that I have the materials I need, the patterns I need, um, and everything ready so that I can just move quickly from one pattern to the next. Um, usually when I knit gifts, they tend to be smaller things. So uh, that makes them a little bit more manageable. And the uh, gift that I have on my needles right now is something I talked about last time. It's from the book Moon and Turtle that was recently published by Pom Pom Quarterly. And it is the Lewski Hood. Um, this is a, like a neck warmer hood with an optional face warmer, which I may or may not knit. Um, and I just thought it would be a great thing to have for us as we walk the dog or if we go skiing. So I cast one on for my husband. This is the largest size. 
and I am using Malabrigo Rios. It's the same yarn I used for his scarf that I just finished, I think in the last episode. This is the Cosmos colorway. And as you can see, it's just right now a tube. It's cast on using a provisional cast on. And then um, you knit a few rows and you do a hem. So you end up picking up the stitches from the back side and working them with the right side stitches to get that hem. And then now I'm just knitting in a tube <clears throat> straight up until I reach sort of some stitches that I will bind off for the face opening. And then I'll create the rest of the hood. It's going really quickly and I'm really happy with it. I'm happy that it will also match his scarf um, so he could wear them both or one um, or the other. Uh, this will keep his head warm. I hope while we're walking the dog. And I have, a, so I did end up buying another uh, skein of this Malabrigo Rio, Malabrigo Rios in the Cosmos colorway. And I am right now just using helical knitting to blend those two skeins together. The part skein I had left over from the scarf, as well as the new skein that I have. Um, and then I also have a half skein of the cowboy left over. So this for sure I will be using for the drawstring for around the face opening. And I may or may not add the optional face warmer. My plan is to knit up the hood first and kind of try it on myself and see what that is like and then decide whether or not I want to do the face warmer. The face warmer starts at the bottom of this hem and goes up to cover your face while you're wearing this hood. So it might be a little extra, like it might be almost too much. So I think what I'm gonna do is just make the hood for now, do the drawstring and then um, get him to test it out a bit and see if it actually needs the face warmer or not. We'll see. However, um, I feel like I've made good progress on this, um, on this first gift. I started it as soon as I finished this sweater and it's coming along nicely and I should have it finished um, rather soon. So the next project I have for gift knitting scheduled for this month is um, a pair of socks. Now, I think I showed you a couple pairs of socks in my last episode of Jolene Knits A Lot. And um, I'm planning on making the little boxes socks. I'll pop a picture up here. These are some cute little shorty socks that use color work to create, I think, what will be a very cozy sock. Uh, it uses three different colors and I have an assortment of yarn that I'd like to show you. So the yarn that I have um, to play with for these little boxes socks is, is all um, Exmoor Sock by John Arben. Here's one in the skein still. And it comes in great colors. You don't need very much for these socks. Um, I have this beautiful green color, just super bright and exciting, that I think I will pair with this sort of almost eggplanty purple. And maybe this bright pink for one set of socks. The other set of socks, I would like to use this beautiful bright blue color with this gold and possibly the hot pink again. What do you think? Um, I think that's what I'm planning to do. I'm gonna see how much yarn each of the socks actually uses. I don't think it's very much. I have other bits and bobs of sock yarn lying around, but um, I think this will be a great way to use some of this leftover yarn that I used for my mom's flea card again. Um, so all I have to do is wind up this one skein of yarn and I'll have lots of colors to choose from. Well, I kind of like these two together now. What do you think of these two? And purple? Oh, how am I gonna decide? Huh. Could be a toss up or I could be making lots of different pairs of socks, which should be fine. Shorty socks go super fast. Anyway, so my next um, gift on the needles will be some little boxes socks from probably my daughters and possibly myself. And that is my gift knitting planning for right now. So gift planning is definitely underway. Um, when you're a knitter, you, I think, plan ahead, um, or oftentimes, 
uh, we need longer to create the gifts that we want to make if we're making gifts. Um, so I hope that you are planning your gift knitting um, and that you aren't feeling overwhelmed. I, I think my key to not being overwhelmed by um, gift knitting is to choose carefully who you knit for. Um, choose people that you know will appreciate and wear the things that you make them. And um, start small, start with smaller gifts. Hats and mittens are great um, gifts and a great place to start because they're not as um, daunting as trying to knit everyone in your life a sweater. Um, I have one other project that I would like to share with you, but I'm going to just put up a big spoiler alert right here because I did start the Stephen West um, Mystery Knit Along. I got swept up. Um, so if you don't want to see or hear anything about it, stop right now and go to this timestamp on the bottom of your screen. Go here now if you do not want to hear anything about the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. So I caved, I totally caved. And you know what? I kind of knew I was going to cave. Um, and as with a lot of other people I'm hearing, is that they um, were excited about the idea of uh, a new project. Um, the mystery of getting a clue every week, um, of knitting along with a bunch of other knitters who are knitting the same thing at the same time with different colors and, and choosing your colors and enjoying watching other people choose their colors. So um, I got swept up. And as soon as that first clue dropped, I was like super excited to cast on. And in fact, there is a new clue out now, and I'm holding off until I podcast talk to you before I cast on the new clue. Let me talk to you a little bit about it. Um, Stephen West, I have to say, has mastered the knit along. He um, creates patterns that are exciting to knit. Um, he often uses small sections with differing techniques to keep you interested and engaged and using your yarns in different and unexpected ways. The other thing that I noticed about this knit along, which um, I haven't seen before, but in I haven't actually participated in one of his mystery knit alongs for a couple of years now, but he, Stephen has put out a video that walks you through every step of this pattern. If there if you are picking up stitches, he shows you exactly where to pick them up um, and talks you through it like a friend. Um, he shows you techniques. He makes it very approachable. Um, and I think that if you were at all unsure that you may not be able to have the techniques to um, knit a mystery knit along, um, I would encourage you that if you were an adventurous knitter, um, adventurous beginner or an intermediate knitter, he walks you through so many steps of the pattern that you would likely have the skills you need to make this this pattern successfully. So I'm going to now show you clue one. <clears throat> and by now there's lots of spoilers out. But clue one starts with a tiny little um, cast on. Uh, it's like an I-cord cast on that you might see for a lot of crescent, crescent shawls and you work this tiny little section. And then all of a sudden you cast on a bunch of I-cord stitches along an edge and start working these really interesting wedges. They're just short row wedges worked in stocking stitch and garters or in reverse stocking stitch actually. And it creates this really beautiful halo. Uh, I chose a dark color to frame all my other ones. Um, but in Stephen's sample, he uses a light one and they're equally beautiful. The next section was some V's, which are um, just using slip stitches um, to create this really pretty slip V pattern. And then the last section, which I thought I would be able to knit very quickly because the instructions were very short, ended up taking me quite a long time. And that's these, um, a whole row of these I-cord loops. And, and each section is a different technique. Each section is a different um, stitch pattern or color palette. And I'm really, really enjoying it, but I'm also really, really enjoying the colors that I chose. These are all yarns I picked up at the Prairie Fiber Festival. 
They are from Sassy Strings and um, she's still got yarn in her shop. So I would encourage you to check her out. I'll put a link in the show notes below. Um, so this is clue one. Clue two apparently has more knitting, so it could be taking me a while. But I'm excited to get going on it. And as soon as the clue drops, I drop everything, all of my other knitting <clears throat> and only knit on this. Um, and I have to say, I, it has really allowed me to find some joy in my knitting, some excitement in my knitting, because I don't know what I'm making. Um, but I'm excited to see each week what Steven comes up with. Um, and I would really encourage you to take part um, if you can, or if not, just watch vicariously other people's spoiler alerts. People knit these clues so quickly, some of them. It's fun to see how um, quickly, A, how quickly people are knitting up the clues and B, the color choices that they're making. Um, so it's really interesting. Uh, so that is my Stephen West Shawlography Mystery Knit Along. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so we're back. If you chose not to be spoiled, I can't blame you. Um, I'm trying my best to not look at any spoiler pictures until I have worked my way through the clue. Um, and if you don't want to be spoiled about what this pattern looks like, um, I can't blame you. But you have a very strong reserve um, because I find it very difficult to stay away from the, the spoilers for sure. That's my, that's my Stephen West mystery knit along. And finally today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some books. So welcome to Jolene Reads A Lot. Um, I have been knitting for quite a long time and through my knitting journeys, I've heard of different authors and different books about knitting um, that I've picked up and really enjoyed. And as with everything, I find some books I, I'll read through and think, okay, that was interesting and I'll put it away and I won't really look at it again. Um, but certain books I go back to time and time again. Um, and I was reminded of a set of books that I really enjoyed and got a lot out of recently. Um, I'd heard about an audio podcast called The Yarns at Yin Hu. I will type that here so that it makes sense to you. Uh, and I will link this podcast in the show notes below. The Yarns at Yin Hu, who did a series of interviews with um, an academic named Dr. Lily Marsh, who did a PhD on Elizabeth Zimmerman. Elizabeth Zimmerman is um, a fairly well-known knitter. She was born in Britain, lived in Germany for a while, and then moved to America with her husband, where um, she uh, and he started a family. And she um, established herself as a very knowledgeable knitter, as well as an entrepreneur. She began uh, writing knitting patterns in a different way than patterns were written uh, previously. She also championed the idea of patterns as intellectual property and uh, that they belonged to the knitter and not the um, publication that ordered them. And that, in, that a pattern um, as intellectual property had value. Um, she was an amazing teacher. She taught many knitters how to knit through her shows on PBS. Um, she was a very interesting woman with a great sense of humor. And she, I think, liked to stir the pot a bit. She would throw out ideas and let people argue over them about uh, what was the best way to do this or that increase or this or that cast on. Uh, but through her books, and she has, I think, four or five books. I have a couple that really helped me uh, gain conf confidence as a knitter and uh, look at knitting in a different way. So the, the first of those books is The Knitter's Almanac. Now, Knitter's Almanac, ooh, you're getting a nice glare. Knitter's Almanac, 
Uh, as you can see, my my pad my book is well loved. This is a tiny volume that Elizabeth wrote, um, a sort of uh, akin to the I guess Farmer's Almanac. Um, it was published in. 1974 originally, and then republished in 1981. The book works its way through the year with patterns for knitting um, each month. And uh, before the pattern, Elizabeth talks a little bit about her life, um, her knitting, different techniques that she uses or has discovered. And then she um, offers up a pattern to the knitter. The unique thing about Elizabeth Zimmerman's patterns is that they're more of a recipe than a pattern. They're not the kind of pattern that we're used to seeing. And she offers a lot of uh, leeway for the knitter to make decisions for themselves. Um, for example, she gives a, a basic um, cable pattern for a sweater in January. It's called the Erin sweater. But she offers the knitter the option to insert whatever cable motif uh, they're interested in um, and to choose their own cables that they like better. So here's an example. There's a picture of her Erin sweater and she just talks you through how to, how to create it for yourself um, and how to adjust this for size and gauge, how to measure gauge, giving a lot of ownership to the knitter to make decisions for themselves. In fact, um, Often her directions for a pattern call the, refer to them as pithy directions. So pithy directions for the Aran sweater. Um, and she just gives very, very basic sort of instructions to get you going on your own, giving you the freedom and the leeway to create the pattern that you want. So all throughout this book, you'll find patterns for um, pretty little things that um, you never knew you needed. A great example is the February baby sweater. The February baby sweater has been knit thousands of times by knitters over the years, which I think uh, speaks a lot to its timelessness um, and the beauty of the instructions. And I just love the stories that she tells all throughout the book. Um, it's, it's honestly a lot like knitting with a friend, and I often pick this book up and read the stories um, to myself. Um, and it's like visiting a friend. In May, there's Mittens for May, where she has some color work and some um, striped. Um, and she just makes all of these projects very, very approachable. So if you are a knitter who um, is wanting to learn a little bit more and enjoy a book at the same time. Knitter's Almanac is an amazing volume. I have knit many, many of the patterns. This is where you'll find a direction for the pie shawl, a round shawl that Elizabeth Zimmerman established a recipe for, and so many knitters have uh, embraced and made their own. So. The Knitter's Almanac is one of my favorite knitting books. And if you have um, read The Knitter's Almanac and really enjoyed it, I might recommend then that you try out The Opinionated Knitter, which I think is a great title. The Opinionated Knitter is a collection of newsletters that Elizabeth Zimmerman would send out to her customers or to subscribers. Um, and each volume, includes some thoughts, <laughs> often funny thoughts, uh, and a pattern. Uh, with the very first uh, leaflet, as she refers to them, uh, that came out, provides you with the directions for a uh, feral sweater. You can use uh, whatever yarns you like, whatever um, patterns you like, although she does provide you with some that she used, and some very basic instructions on how to create a sweater that will fit you. Um, it's the very beginning of her uh, percentage system. You don't need an actual pattern. If you have um, some basic knitting skills like figuring out gauge and measuring for the size of sweater you want, 
you could use her number system to create the sweater that you like with the yarn that you like. Um, and that's part of what I really love about Elizabeth Zimmerman is her um, way of making knitting accessible to anyone. You don't need to have fancy pattern books. You just have to have a little bit of um, gumption and a little bit of um, willingness to apply your mind to calculating some numbers and you're off to the races. And then she takes her presented system and creates different types of sweaters. Um, again, using cables and color work and allowing the knitter to choose um, their own style of, of sweater. Um, some of the very famous sweaters that she has included in this book are the Tompton sweater, which is a garter stitch sweater. Uh, again, very approachable. And then um, a number of different hats, socks, baby items, and comments on how to uh, make them your own. So if you are, uh, an, again, if you're interested in sort of expanding yourself or um, taking more ownership of your knitting, I would recommend The Knitter's Almanac and The Opinionated Knitter by Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, having listened to those podcasts about Elizabeth Zimmerman, uh, they finished their podcast uh, by asking uh, the interviewer and the interviewee, asking each other who was um, instrumental in inspiring you to be a creator or a maker or a crafter or however you want to think of yourself. And that got me thinking, um, certainly, Elizabeth Zimmerman was uh, an inspiration once I had sort of established some basic knitting skills and had um, sort of walked down that path a little bit. I had learned a few things. But um, who originally inspired me to be a creator? Um, for me, I think that was my grandmother uh, and my mother too. Um, but my grandmother was um, a very, very skilled woman. She went to school to grade eight, I think, because after that, um, there was no high school where she lived and she was needed to help out on the farm. So she wasn't able to pursue academics. Um, but that didn't mean that she wasn't a very wise um, and knowledgeable woman. She was an amazing gardener. Um, and she baked. If she went into town and found something at the bakery that she thought looked interesting, she would come home and create her own version of that. And I remember as a child um, visiting my Bob and she had made this blueberry um, sort of braided pastry. And she said, well, I saw it in town and I thought I'd try it myself. And this, is, this was her version. And I thought to myself, how wonderful to be able to look at something and create it out of your own head out of your own experience out of your own ideas um, and then uh, as I grew older I um, watched her do needle various different needle crafts she taught me how to crochet um, I was never a very good crocheter but uh, she taught me to appreciate the work of your hands and to value that because she valued that when I was older, um, I learned how to knit from my sister-in-law, actually, when I was uh, an adult, I was about 20, 21, and my sister-in-law taught me how to knit. And then soon after she taught me, I was a knitter. I knit everywhere. I took my knitting with me. I gifted my knitting to various people. And my Bobby used to say to me, you are a knitter. Uh, and you could hear the capital K in that. Um, and I think she saw in me that same um, desire to make things with your hands and the, um, the value of the things that you make with your hands. Um, I know she, uh, when she learned to knit after I learned to knit um, and she would practice, I think by herself, um, she, she said, she would tell me that she never was as skilled a knitter as I was. And I, I don't know if that's because she didn't want to show me the things that she knitted or she appreciated the things that I knitted for her. Um, but she was certainly an inspiration to me in believing in myself, 
that I could make things out of my own head, out of my own ideas, and also to value the things that you make. Um, that homemade is not, is not a bad word, that the things that you make um, are valuable and beautiful. Um, so she was certainly one of my inspirations. Who inspires you? Who inspires you to create the things that you create and to value the things that you make? I hope that um, meeting here, talking together, helps you um, feel pride in the things that you make and the work of your hands, um, that you wear your knits with pride. And I thank you. I thank you for joining me um, every couple of weeks for a little talk about um, something that uh, is not small. It is not trifling. It is not just a hobby. Knitting is, it's important. It's an important skill. It's an important art. Um, and it's something we should be proud of. So thank you. And on that note, I just wanted to let you know that last episode was my one year anniversary of hosting this podcast and talking with you. And I had a prize, which I will show now. And I wanted to let you know that the winner of this prize is Maureen Williford. Maureen, please uh, contact me at Jolene Knits A Lot. I will put that here. Please feel free to email me um, and we will touch base on how to best to get this prize to you. I thank all of you for joining me uh, every couple of weeks for talking about crafting and uh, taking time for us, for um, to talk to other makers, to share our passion and our crafts. Um, I thank you. Thank you for joining me. And I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you find time to knit or craft or bake or wrap up your garden, make a list of Christmas gifts that you want to make in the next little while. Christmas is coming. It's time to plan. I know I plan on tackling clue two of the shawlography Stephen West make along and knitting a lot. Bye.